Hey there, Android developers. Interested in getting started with Cloud Firestore, the auto-syncing, auto-scaling database in the cloud? Well, have I got a video for you. It's, um, it's this one. So, come on, let's save our data to the cloud in this episode of Firecast. So, I'm working on a little app here that lets me store an inspirational quote. I mean, I can't just be expected to start doing work, right? Like, I need an inspiring quote, preferably from Einstein or maybe Marilyn Monroe, to motivate me. And what better way to do this than with an app? So my app here consists of an edit text view where I can enter my inspirational quote and then a second one here where I can store the author's name. I then have a save button where we're gonna save whatever inspiring message our user has entered into the cloud. So later we'll load whatever data our users saved to the cloud and display it with a big text view or something. So uh, if you want to follow along, go ahead and create your own version of this app. Just make sure you have some properties for the edit views and an on-click handler for the button called, um, like, save quote. Now, I've already gone ahead and created a Firebase project in the Firebase console and configured the Google services plugin with my JSON file. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out this getting started video here and then come back. It's okay. I'll wait. Now, before we go ahead and write some data, let's take a moment to understand how Cloud Firestore generally works. Frankly, this could be the subject of its own separate video and it probably will be one day, but here is the executive summary. Cloud Firestore is a document database. That means it kind of stores your data in a big tree-like structure, kind of like the original real-time database, but everything is placed into documents and collections. You can think of a document as something kind of like a map. It's got key value pairs, which the Firestore folks like to refer to as fields. And the values of these things can be like any number of things, from strings to numbers to binary values to little smaller maps that are kind of JSON-y looking objects. And collections are basically, well, collections of documents. So there are a few rules around the use of these things. The first is that collections can only contain documents, nothing else. No collections of strings or binary blobs or anything else there. Second is that documents can't contain other documents, but they can point to subcollections. So it's very common to see a collection containing a bunch of documents, which then point to subcollections that contain other documents and so on. In a workout app, for instance, I might have a user's collection, and this collection would contain a document for each user. And then each of those documents might point to a workout subcollection that in turn contains a document for each different type of workout that this user has performed. And then maybe each one of these has a history subcollection that keeps track of every time the user performed one of these workouts, maybe along with like some average heart rate data or some other stuff like that. Now, if you're coming from real-time database land, this kind of deep nesting might be giving you heart palpitations, but don't worry. This kind of data structure is completely normal in the Cloud Firestore world where queries are shallow, meaning that when you grab data from a document, you'll grab just that document, not any of the documents contained in any of the subcollections below, which is nice. The third rule is that the root of your database can only consist of collections. Now, in a normal production app, this is gonna feel pretty natural. You're gonna have like your collection of items and your collection of users and your collection of games or what have you. The one time it's gonna seem kind of weird, it's when you're creating a little test app like ours and you just wanna save like two strings. So looking at our app, at the top level, I'm gonna start with a collection that I'm calling sample data. This will then contain one single document called inspiration. This document will itself have two key value pairs or fields, one called quote and another called author. Uh, incidentally, note that this is basically a global variable that I'm altering, meaning that I'm not storing one quote per user, I'm letting everybody in the world alter this one document. If I were looking to save a different quote per user, which I might do in an actual app, I'd probably be setting up a user's collection and creating a different document for each user. Make sense? All right, let's start building. So first things first, I need to make sure I have Firestore installed. And so I'll go into my app's Gradle file and add this line here to add Firestore to my project. Obviously, this version number will be different than what's current. Heck, I'm not even sure this version will work by the time you see this video. So do make sure you grab the most recent version from our documentation. And then I'll tell Android Studio to go ahead and sync, and we're good. So next, in my main activity here, I'm gonna head on down to my save quote call. So in there, I will first grab the text for my two edit text views. So we'll get the views, and then we will grab the strings from them, okay? And then maybe uh, I'll do a check to make sure they're not empty. Next, I'll create the data I want to save in my document. Now this will be a map of type string object that I will implement as a hash map. So I'll use the key quote and then the string of my quote text view as my value. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the author. And uh, let's do the right thing in command option, see these things so that we can make these key names constants. Okay, that's better. All right, now I just need to save this to the cloud. 
And to do that, I need to specify in which document I want to put this data. So we do that through an object known as a document reference. It turns out I'll be using the same reference multiple times throughout this project, so I'm going to make it a field up here in my class. And uh, let's initialize it up here too. Now, there are a few ways of setting my document reference. First, I could call Firebase Firestore .get instance .collection sample data .document inspiration. Now, I kind of like doing this because it serves as a nice reminder that you're always going to alternate between collections and documents. But it does start to look a little nutty when you get several layers deep. Like, this is, this is kind of silly. So an alternative that I prefer is calling document, where I pass along a slash separated string as our path. So in our case, the path would be sample data slash inspiration. And just remember that in your path, you're always going to be alternating between collections, documents, collection, document, and so on. So now that I've specified my document, let's go back to my save quote method where I'm going to call set on the document reference. And uh, that'll take in the data I created above as the contents of my document. Now this call will replace my current document if it exists and create it if it doesn't. Uh, it also conveniently creates the sample data collection too, uh, so I don't need to worry about that not existing. Now I'm going to chain on an on success listener like so, where we can print a debug message. OK. And uh, let's command option C this puppy too. And then we can add on an on failure listener where we can print out any error messages. And that's it. All right, for those of you who are all about fewer listeners in your call, you could also handle this with a single on complete listener like so, and then just check in here to see if your task is successful. Um, Either way works, and uh, honestly, it's just really up to you which method you prefer. All right, let's give this a try. So I'm going to start up my app, and I'm going to enter this very inspirational quote here in the text field, and I'm pretty sure that was said by Plato. Uh, I'll hit save, and uh, oh, whoops, looks like we're getting an authorization error. And this is because, just like the real-time database, my Cloud Firestore implementation contains a set of security rules that determine whether or not a certain action will be permitted. And by default, they're set up so that nobody can read or write to the database. So the correct solution here would probably be to add in some sign-in using Firebase Auth and then create some proper, well-thought-out security rules based on what information I'm willing to share to each particular user. That said, all that would make this a much longer video than it already is, so I'm just going to do a bit of a hack here and make my sample data documents open to the public. So uh, let's head on over to the Firebase console. I'll select my project, go here to the database section, and then uh, make sure I select Cloud Firestore for my list of database options. Then I will click the Rules tab, and then I'm going to add these lines here to allow reading and writing to anything that's part of my sample data collection. Now, this is a pretty terrible idea from a security perspective, but at least I've contained the damage to just what's in my sample data collection. So uh, I'll publish that, and we are done. OK, uh, let's give it another try. I'm going to wait a few seconds, and then go back into my app, hit Save, and uh, huh, looks like it worked. And I can verify this by going back to the Firebase console. We'll select the Data tab, and then I can look at our sample data collection, find our inspiration document, and sure enough, looks like we've saved our inspiring quote to the world. Woohoo! OK, next up, we need to show our users this inspirational quote by grabbing that data from the cloud and populating some kind of text view with it. Now, like the real-time database, Cloud Firestore lets me listen to changes in the database and update my app in real time. But I know that for some of you out there, the idea of creating a real-time listener for all your data is weird and strange. And sometimes you just want a basic fetch call to get your data, right? So I'm going to show you how to do that first, and then we can talk about getting fancy with some real-time listeners. So let's create a fetch button. I'm going to add some constraints and some text for the button. It's just a button, nothing too fancy here. And then uh, I'm going to stick a text view in the middle of my screen so that I have a user visible location where I can display the quote. We'll fix that up. We'll add in some default text, give it a name. All right. Uh, next up, I'll add a placeholder method called fetch quote, and I'll make that my button's onclick handler. All right, let's edit this method. So I already have my document reference. As you'll recall, I created it as a field earlier. So I can simply call get on that reference to fetch the document. Now for this call, I can also add an on success listener. And you'll notice that this time, the listener takes in a document snapshot. A document snapshot is basically an object that represents your document. You can find out its ID, read some metadata about it, make sure the underlying document it represents really exists, and most importantly, grab the data that it contains. We'll see if our document exists. And if it does, I'm going to get our quote by grabbing document snapshot.getString. And uh, I'll use that quote key constant I created earlier. 
I'll do the same thing for my author name. And uh, incidentally, there are other ways of getting at this data. If I wanted to fetch it all at once, I could call get data, and then that would give me my entire document in a string object map. And for more sophisticated projects, uh, document snapshots in Cloud Firestore have this nifty to object helper function that will look probably familiar if you've ever used the real time database before. Basically, this will take the data that you get back from the database and attempt to create an object of the type that you specify. It'll take whatever values it gets back from Firestore and try to set those as fields. So for this to work, you have to make sure that the target object has a constructor that accepts no arguments, and it's probably a good idea to have getters for these fields too. So uh, if I wanted to make inspiring quote its own class, it might look a little something like this. And uh, yes, apparently it's fine for those field names to be private like that. And while this custom object stuff is pretty neat, uh, for now I think I'm just going to stick with my original two get string calls. Next, we'll want to display this text on screen. So let's make sure we have a field that references our quote text view. Uh, we can set it in onCreate, and then we'll set the text value. And uh, we're done. And uh, yeah, I should probably add an on failure listener here too, but for brevity's sake, let's skip that. So let's run this. We'll click fetch, and there we go. I can save my inspirational quote to the cloud, and now I can load it with the click of a button. So this is great. We've got our data successfully saved and loaded from Cloud Firestore. But what if you are interested in getting your data in real time? What if this explicit fetching seems quaint and old fashioned to you? Well, let's show you how to get your data in real time too. Basically, the process is going to work nearly the same. Let's override my on start method, and uh, in there, I'm going to bring up my doc ref. But now, instead of calling get, I'm going to call add snapshot listener and I'll create a new event listener for the document snapshot. Now this will fetch my document the first time I set it up, but then it will also grab updated data anytime thereafter when that document changes. So my onEvent function gets passed in a document snapshot just like my onSuccess handler below. So in fact, I'm just going to copy the exact same code for my fetch call into here to update the text view. And uh, maybe I'll print out a warning if I do get an exception like this. Now while this will work, we also want to do the right thing and turn off this listener when it isn't needed. For instance, when my activity is off screen. This will help to keep your network usage low, which means better battery life for your user, and potentially lower database costs for you, both of which are good things. Now, I could track this listener manually and then you know, remove it at an appropriate point, like in my onStop method, uh, but there's an easier way. You see, there's an alternate call for add snapshot listener where you can pass in an activity as the first argument. And this activity is telling our event listener, hey, when this activity stops, you can go ahead and detach this listener. And so by specifying this as my first argument, my listener will automatically do the right thing and detach when my main activity stops. So uh, let me run the app again. You can see that thanks to my snapshot listener, my label automatically gets updated with the inspirational Plato quote that was used previously. And then if I change my inspirational quote to this one, uh, I think Einstein said this, uh, you can see that my text view gets updated automatically without my having to even touch that fetch button. Wow. Gee, that was fast. Maybe too fast, right? It looked like my text view got updated before I even got the console message that my data was saved to the cloud. How did that happen? Well, what's going on is that Cloud Firestore is making my app run as speedy as possible by notifying me of changes that happen locally as if they had happened on the server. But in the meantime, it's still going ahead and updating that data remotely in the background. Now it turns out my client does still receive an update from Firestore that this data has been changed on the server, but by default the Firestore library will ignore this event because basically with the exception of a little bit of metadata that says, yes, this is really from the server, it's identical to the first. Now if you wanted, you could get notified by the SDK about the second event, the one that actually happens when the write happens on the server. Um, you do this by creating some options for your document listener that say, yes, notify me even when just the metadata changes. You would pass those options in, add in a little debugging to print out what we get, and uh, let's add in one more quote. Notice that when I save this thing now, my callback is getting called twice, once for the change in my local cache and then once on the server. Now there may be times when this behavior is what you want, but honestly most of the time the default behavior works just fine. So I'm going to go back to what we had before, and you probably should too. So there you go. Congratulations. You are now saving your data in one of the most powerful and sophisticated online databases in the world and using it to store two lines of text, which maybe is a little overkill, but in a real app, you'll appreciate this power. Trust me. 
Now, there's a lot more to learn about Cloud Firestore, including more details on how that data is structured, how subcollections work, and how to run some more sophisticated queries, all of which are great topics for future videos. In the meantime, go back to those security rules and change them to be a little more secure. And when you're done with that, be sure to check out the documentation and try using Cloud Firestore in your own app. As the saying goes, the journey of a thousand miles begins with reading the documentation. I think Ruth Bader Ginsburg said that.